Hey everyone, Paddy from Smarter here. Today I'm going to talk about PM 2.5. I'm going to cover what is PM 2.5, where does it come from, the effects it has on our health, how we can measure it, and then finally how we can protect ourselves from PM 2.5. So PM 2.5 stands for particulate matter that is 2.5 microns or below. So that 2.5 microns is technically the aerodynamic diameter of the particle is less than 2.5. Microns. Now, just how small is that? I'm going to show you by pulling out one of my hairs. Ouch, I don't have a whole lot on my head, but here's, here's one of my hairs. And PM 2.5 is roughly 50 times smaller than the size of this hair. You probably can't even see it there, but PM 2.5 is 50 times smaller than this, so pretty much unable to see with the naked eye. PM 2.5 can come from multiple sources, both indoors and outdoors. In terms of indoor sources, some of the main places that you can find PM 2.5 are from cooking. So just cooking can generate PM 2.5. In fact, smokers and cigarettes burning, that causes PM 2.5. Uh, viruses are technically a type of PM 2.5. They're really, really small. They're smaller than 2.5 microns and they are particles. So they're technically also uh, PM 2.5. And then in other places, uh, indoor locations, such as potentially, say, subways or metros, you can find other types of PM 2.5, such as heavy metals like iron, manganese, chromium, copper. Some of the main sources of outdoor PM 2.5 are things like transport, cars, buses, trucks, these all generate PM 2.5, as is burning, a coal power plants, also a major source of PM 2.5, and then factories, general factories, manufacturing is another source. Pretty much anywhere we have human activity, we are generating and creating PM 2.5. Now then, that's the boring scientific stuff out of the way. Let's get into the juicy parts. Uh, PM 2.5 is dangerous because it can get into our lungs, past our nose hairs, through our throat, into our lungs, and then finally into our bloodstream and cause all kinds of havoc on the body. Let's talk about some of the health effects of PM 2.5. In the short term, uh, if I was to go outside today, into this is Beijing's uh, air pollution today it's pretty pretty heavy today if I was to go outside today some of the short-term effects I would probably experience like headaches sore throat uh, and also I probably see high blood pressure and things like that I might feel a little bit tired a little bit wheezy those are all regular common short-term health effects long-term health effects are a little bit more severe uh, we have things like um, heart attacks and heart issues or heart disease. In fact, because this PM 2.5 is getting into our lungs, it's getting into our bloodstream, it can cause all kinds of effects on our entire body. There's also been studies showing that it can affect the IQ of children and have, uh, have effect on young, born, young, young children and early born children as well. So how can we know if there's PM 2.5 in the air? Well, there's a few ways, a few things we can do. Very simply, you can pick up a air quality monitor, which this is measuring right now. We have very, very good air quality inside here. Okay, another way if you don't have an air quality monitor is to use an app on your phone. You can, you can just search for air quality uh, and you'll be able to find some apps that can measure outdoor air pollution nearby to where you are and tell you about the pollution levels. If you don't have either of those, there are still some things you can do. First of all, very simply, you can just look outside and if you see a kind of a hazy day, some people often think mistake PM 2.5 for fog or mist, but in fact today outside here in Beijing it's PM 2.5. And you can also, if you go outside, you can even smell it sometimes. You can smell PM 2.5. It could be a kind of a coal burning smell or it could be a kind of a acidic or kind of sour smell. You can sometimes smell PM 2.5. And then another pretty easy way, if it's, if it's PM 2.5 isn't that heavy today in Beijing, it's very, very heavy, uh, so I can see it really clearly. But if it's not that heavy, you can actually use light as an indicator. I'll pop up some images now on the screen comparing a day when, when PM 2.5 levels are low and those when they're high, and you can see it's much, much more orange on the day when PM 2.5 levels are high. So PM 2.5 can actually cause the light to kind of turn orange. So what can we do to protect ourselves from PM 2.5? Well, thankfully, it's pretty simple. There are generally two things we want to do. One for when we're outdoors, which is wear a mask. N95, KN95, N99 masks, these all work. Surgical masks also do a reasonable job of filtering out PM 2.5. And then when we're indoors, really the simplest thing to do, keep your windows closed to avoid the outdoor PM 2.5 coming in. Of course, if you've got indoor sources, such as cooking, cigarettes, closing the windows, won't help and you might actually want to open them to let that 
PM 2.5 out, and then finally turning on a purifier. So I've got my purifier here turned on, which is why the pollution levels where I am today are so low. That's it, that's a very brief kind of five minute overview of PM 2.5, hope that was useful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll follow up there.